you're anything like me, then you don't want Warzone to look and feel like a potato. So I'm going to show you the best settings to use to increase the quality of your game while still maintaining great performance. And I'm also going to show you a hidden setting you need to make sure you change. So make sure to stick around until the end. First, I'm going to start with some window settings. So you're going to want to go to your search bar here and type in power and then click choose a power plan. We're going to set this to high performance. And then the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the search bar and we're gonna type in game mode. And open the game mode settings here. Make sure this is on. And then to the right, you're gonna see graphic settings. Make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is on. Next, we're gonna right click the desktop. We're gonna open our Nvidia control panel. We're gonna start with adjust image settings with preview. Make sure you have this set to use the advanced 3D image settings. Then we're going to skip over manage 3D settings for now. We're going to go to resolution, change resolution. A lot of times if you have this in native, it's not actually going to let you use your monitor's max refresh rate. So what you do to fix that is go down to where it says PC and choose your resolution here. And as you can see, it shows up right here. The next thing we want to do is go to adjust desktop color settings right here and turn this to 70. I found 70 to be the best. Anything less than 70, I found the games look too dull and anything more than it, it just kind of pops too much. So just put it between like 70, 75 maybe. So I know you guys probably don't wanna spend 30 minutes watching a settings video. So I'm going to fly through these 3D settings quick. So for Warzone, what we wanna do is actually add it as a program. So you go to program settings here and then if you don't already have this in your drop down, you can go to add, click add here, and then you can either scroll down and find it, or if you can't find it there, go to browse. And then you're able just to find um, the game that way and then add it. Oh, okay, so image scaling, we leave that global. We don't have to worry about ambient occlusion. And it's traffic filtering, set this to 16. It makes the game look amazing and it doesn't really affect FPS too much. Anti-aliasing FXAA, we can turn this off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction, turn this off. We're gonna leave anti-aliasing mode at application controlled. Uh, you don't have to worry about this setting, it'll get turned off. And then these two settings here, we're just gonna leave off. You can leave CUDA GPUs, just leave that to global. Um, system fallback policy, leave that to driver default. Well, latency mode, a lot of people want to turn this on or turn it to ultra. Warzone actually has a way we can do that in game. So we're just going to leave this off and we're going to take care of that in game. Using the max frame rate within the game is going to allow for a lower input latency. So we're going to leave it off and just use it in game. Monitor technology. Um, some people are in G-Sync. For Warzone, I run fixed refresh rate because I want the lowest input latency as possible. Um, you can leave this setting, the multi-frame sampled off leave the open gl gdi compatibility to auto and then for the open gl rendering you can choose your gpu most people only have one gpu um i just leave it at uh, auto use the global setting here and then power management mode this one for some reason i find i get better performance putting this to normal even though in the window settings we actually put it to for like performance mode for some reason normal works for me in the control panel don't know why so try that out and then for the preferred refresh rate i'm going to put this to highest available and that's why we changed the resolution setting right away so we have the highest available texture filtering and anisotropic sample options turn this on for the texture filtering negative lod bias we're going to leave that to clamp so this is the texture filtering quality is another one. Some people change, either put this to quality or performance. I choose performance because my game doesn't look too bad with it on like that. Uh, this setting here, trilinear optimization, we leave that on. And then threaded optimization, put this to auto, triple buffering off, vertical sync, there's a way you can turn that on in Warzone. Don't know why you'd use it, but I just let that be the 3D application because you want to use it for some reason. And then we don't really have to worry about these. Global, this won't 
sleeping option and then leave this to auto. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get into the in-game settings for Warzone. Go up to your settings here, go to graphics. Um, you're gonna wanna be in full screen exclusive for the best input latency. Full screen borderless isn't that bad, but I find that I like to be in full screen exclusive just to make sure I'm getting the best advantage as possible. Then obviously you're gonna want your, to choose the, your gaming monitor. You don't have to worry about this. It's just your graphics card. Put your refresh rate to the highest that your monitor can go. Um, whatever resolution you wanna play in. Aspect ratio, I leave to automatic. Restart shaders, if you're getting any issues with stutters in game, a lot of times restarting this can help fix those. Um, leave this gamma or display gamma to 2.2. Brightness, I run it at 55. Some people even go to 60. I find that to be too bright for me personally. And then this is where we turn NVIDIA Reflex Latency on to either on or on plus boost. For me, it works better with just on. So try that out for yourself. Eco mode preset, put this to custom. We don't care about the power bill. We're gonna get the best we can out of this game. Vsync off, don't know why you would ever wanna use that. For the frame rate, I do custom because I like to have a smooth frame rate or controlled frame rate within the menu. I put it to 120 and then I just put this at 300 and never use high dynamic range. It is not meant for shooter games like this. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go to quality. Um, render resolution, there's no need to put this past 100. Just put it out of 100, whatever resolution you're running. Dynamic resolution, off. For upscaling, if you're in 1440p, you could try doing DLSS. If you were to do DLSS, this is for NVIDIA cards. Um, you can mess with the sharpness here and you also have a preset for whether you want the game to look better or you want higher frames, basically. For me, I choose Fidelity Cast and I put the sharpness to 90. That works best for me. I also play in 1080p. So I don't really think DLSS is the best option if you're in 1080p because you can already run the game at higher frames since you're in a lower resolution. So I just, this is what I run for that. Or path tracing and ray reconstruction, just leave that off. VRAM target, you wanna put this started at 60. Don't put it past 70. A lot of times this can actually hurt the performance of your game. For me, I've noticed stuttering when I put this all the way up to 90. So just leave this at 60. Variable rate shading, you're gonna want this on. And then I would recommend putting this at low because the game still looks pretty good, but you're also gonna get a, a jump in frames from normal to low. If it's just not good enough for you, then obviously just run this at normal. Don't do, I wouldn't do high and I wouldn't do very low, but low works good for me. And then for the texture filter and astropic, put this up to high. Depth of field, uh, no, we're gonna leave that off. The detail quality level, I run it at low sometimes something like little things like this you're not gonna like when you're playing warzone you're not really gonna notice it that much if it really bothers you like if a flower doesn't look like a flower or something you can turn it to normal so the particle resolution should actually be set to very low um i'm not sure why mine was on high but um bullet impact turn this on. I turn it on, so I like to check my recoil patterns when I shoot my gun, when I'm trying to set my classes up, so I turn this on. It doesn't really affect the performance too much for me anyway. Persistent effects, I have this off shader quality. This one can hurt your FPS quite a bit. I turn this to low. I don't really, you may notice it. For me, it doesn't really bother me to have this out low. On-demand texture streaming, I would never turn this on. I don't want my internet streaming textures to my PC while I'm playing. I want to get the best connection as possible. So, and then turn local texture streaming quality to low. Shader quality, set to normal. Screen space shadows, turn off. Ambient occlusion, off. Screen space reflections off. And static reflection quality, set that to low. For environment, tessellation, 
off volumetric quality set this to low deferred physics quality off weather grid volumes off and water quality off and then for your field of view i play at 105 most people are probably gonna be at 110 or 120. i would probably recommend starting at 110. i just when i started warzone i played on 105 and i can't really get myself off of it so um ads field of view affected weapon field of view wide don't worry about third person but vehicle field of view you're gonna want to set to wide as well world motion blur we don't want motion blur turn that off weapon motion blur off film grain we don't want like dots all over our screen we want a clear image so turn that off this is for your like camera shake basically set this to the lowest you don't want your screen shaking while you're trying to shoot people in Kyrgyzstan. And then all none of this stuff really matters. Well, this if you're spectating someone, put it in game perspective. Nobody likes to helmet camera. So inverted flashbang. I have this off. Now I'm gonna show you the hidden setting that not many people know about. So what you're gonna want to do is open your file here and then go to documents and then Call of Duty players. You're gonna want to find the one that says options.4.cod 2023. So double click this. Right here where it says thread count for handling the job queue, you're gonna wanna set this number right here to however many cores you have on your CPU. So for example, I have a 13700K. So I would find it here and then find how many cores I have. So the total cores on this one are 16, but we only care about the performance cores. Or CPUs like this. So if you have a CPU like mine where you have efficient cores and performance cores, set that number to whatever the performance cores are. And then you would do the same thing for a Ryzen. Um, find, look up your CPU and then see how many cores you have on it. So then what you would do is whatever this number is that you found, type it in right here. So I would type this in and then go to file and then click save. If you liked this style of video where I literally fly through the best settings used in Warzone, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.